Today, we're checking out the Starlink Battle for Atlas starter pack for the Nintendo Switch that includes Star Fox exclusives. <laughs> Welcome to A Came From A Box, this is Sergio IM, and just when it seemed like the toys to life genre has died out, boom, in comes Starlink Battle for Atlas, to prove that it probably still will. Starlink Battle for Atlas is an open world action adventure game where you play the role of one amongst a crew of pilots who are exploring the Atlas solar system to form alliances with alien races so you can eventually beat the bad guys who kidnapped your captain. The story is a bit generic, so it helps that Ubisoft has once again teamed up with Nintendo to throw Star Fox into the mix exclusively for the Switch version. Wow, this Starlink tech is amazing. So the toys to life aspect of the game comes into play in the form of pilots, spaceships, and weapons, which you can mix and match on the fly for whatever best suits your situation in game. The toys are available individually or in kits, but unlike Skylanders or Disney Infinity, these are optional because the same content is offered digitally and at a cheaper price. So unless you're really into the toys, digital will give you the best bang for your buck. As for me, once they announced the starter pack for the Switch would include Fox McCloud and an R-Wing, I pretty much had no choice, I was suckered in. Oh, also I have kids, so that's another excuse, yeah. All right, so the starter kit includes a physical copy of the game, the R-Wing Starship, two pilots, Fox McCloud and Generic Male. Not just kidding, that is uh, Mason Rana? Two weapons, the Flamethrower and Frost Barrage. One Joy-Con controller mount, which you need to use the toys in game. And you also get two digital items, the Zenith Starship and the Shredder weapon. Overall, the quality of the toys is pretty good. They're well made with a lot of detail and for the most part, decent paint jobs. Let's check out the details. First up, the R-Wing Starship, which has an awesome design, very accurate to the games, and it also has ratcheting boosters that you can adjust. Now, every Starlink ship also has removable wings, so you can swap them out with those from other ships, and they come off very easily due to this connection system that is used throughout all the toys. Then we have weapons, and these just simply attach to the wings. Very straightforward, and to be honest, they're a bit of a letdown. I, I feel they really missed the opportunity to make them functional. Imagine if these actually shot out missiles. That would, that would have been so cool. Anyways, uh, each weapon has a different element, so you can exploit enemy weaknesses and mix and match them to create unique combos. Next, we have pilots. They're very tiny with a lot of detail, but they're made out of rubber, so be careful because they are fragile. Now the coolest thing is that these actually go inside the ship. You can even see them through the window in the cockpit. That's uh, that's uh, that's pretty cute. All right, finally, to bring these toys to life, you're gonna need the controller mount because these toys don't work through NFC, but instead through a proprietary system using the chips within each part. So slide your Joy-Cons in. Next, choose a pilot. Then you carefully attach the ship on top. The whole thing looks a little weird, but there's something so cool about seeing this physical version you're holding replicated on screen. As you collect additional pieces, you can then swap them in and out at any time, and those changes are reflected live on the fly. Also, you're not restricted by what can go in the slot. Instead, you're encouraged to experiment. So go ahead and attach wings on top of wings on top of wings or weapons straight on the chassis of the ship and each part can be flipped backwards or forwards. The more you add, the more stats your ship gets, but it also increases in weight and handling. One last thing, the controller mount can only be used in TV and tabletop mode, but don't worry, you can still play in handheld mode. What happens is every time you attach a part, it unlocks a digital version for seven days in game. After that, you're gonna have to re-register that part again. It's a bit annoying, but it's a system that works for Ubisoft more than consumers, I guess. All right, so that wraps up what comes in that starter pack. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with Starlink. It's a very fun game and the toys are cool, but I wish they were a bit more functional. Now, the biggest issue is that if you choose to go with the toys, you're at a disadvantage compared to digital, which is less expensive and includes way more pilots, ships, and weapons. 
I can't help but feel as if Ubisoft wasn't 100% committed to the toys to life model. And choosing it not only makes you feel left out, but it also makes the game more difficult because you have less items to work with in game. This conflicting physical versus digital system also clashes in weird ways. For example, if I'm using the toys in this kit, I can't swap out for the included digital items because you can't use physical and digital parts together. Then with the physical version, I can dual wield the same weapon, but you can't do that digitally. What I'm trying to say is that the system is lacking polish, but what do you guys think? Do you prefer physical over digital? Uh, if it wasn't for the R-Wing, I probably would have gone digital. Also, what are your thoughts on Toys to Life? I like it, I think it's an interesting concept and my kids will love it, but at one point, you know these will end up in the bargain bin, same as Skylanders. All right, that's all I got. Uh, I'm Sergio AM. Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna go build a crazy looking ship and I'll see you guys for the next box. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and wanna help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out. So please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio IM and I'll see you for the next box.